just me in the bed sheets here having a lovely moment. <laughs> um, spring is definitely coming here. It's so nice. I can hear the birds singing. Though it's still quite cold, it still keeps trying to snow. Um, today I am looking after my little girl and um, probably not doing much else to be honest. But I do have a few new knitting things to show you. Maybe I can do that during her nap time. Um, a new project. So I'm pretty excited to show you that. And obviously I finished my first sweater and blocked it. I'm considering putting some elastic in the neck, potentially. Because I feel like it would help the shape of the neck. But apart from that, um, I am, um, yeah, I need to figure out another couple of projects to cast on next. I have a few ideas and um, a few things I have to work on, so we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, it's definitely been a little while since my last vlog, a few weeks anyway. Took a little break. We had a lot of sickness in the house. <laughs> so, um, yeah pretty done with the winter sickness now at this point <laughs> as well and um, yeah I think that's all that's fresh with me so I'll just take you about my day as, as I can and I will show you my knitting projects a little bit later. Morning it is a Here's Rufus coming, he always comes as soon as he hears me talking. Don't you? Come here and say hello at least then. Come on. Say hello to the camera. Up. Come up, another one. Up here. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> um, so, today I'm wearing my first sweater by Hive Knits. Finally finished it. I'm really, really pleased with it. It fits really well. I had a few fit issues with the sleeves that I had to go back and rectify so that's why it took me so long to finish it. I actually started it last summer and the base is my Herberdain and Black Welsh Mountain. And um, yeah, I'm really enjoying wearing it. The It's a four ply weight so it's a really nice weight to wear in like spring and autumn. It's like the perfect layering piece as they say. <laughs> Um, I have to say now the sleeves are a lot warmer than the body I think because it's in the fisherman's rib. Um, I was vaguely thinking it would be hard to wear you know like down a coat sleeve but it's totally fine. I have nothing that looks like this, nothing with a balloon sweater so I feel like it's a really different look for me and I'm really enjoying wearing it. Um, the only thing I would say about it is I can't wear it when I'm dying because of the sleeves. But other than that, it's great. Uh, and I really like having something with like a bigger kind of sleeve on it. So I want to just check in. I've got my seedlings here. I brought them in there just a moment ago. My tomato seeds in the hopes that they will grow. I've got black zebra tomato and I've got Tomato Citrina. I got these from Irish Seed Savers and I got some other things as well. So I got artichoke seeds and I got I planted some fennel seeds as well. So we'll see how that goes. I want to show you my new cast on. This is the Drop Sweater by Albina McLaughlin. And I am knitting it, knitting it in some yarn that was given to me as a gift, and it, what, and it's actually knitted in. So I'm very lucky that I get to try it because if I hadn't been given this as a gift, I wouldn't get to try it. Um, it was given to me by a friend who had a bit extra of it, and I'm absolutely in love, a with the yarn. B with the pattern and see with the colour of the yarn. Now, I whipped this out last Sunday 
and my mother-in-law goes oh that's it that's a very donkey brown or something like that she said and i thought this is the weirdest thing from donkey brown i can think of because maybe when you look far away it looks brown but when you look close up it is oh my goodness amazing it's a mix of i i'm just going to describe it in my color terms okay so it's a mix of maybe a light brown and some peony pinks, some maroony specks, some mauves, um, some kind of grey tones to it. But it's mixed in so beautifully and like I'm sure you can see that it's not just brown, donkey brown. Um, it is... This is my first time working with unspun yarn, so that's been interesting. I've since learnt that you shouldn't use it straight off the plate and that you should uh, wind it into a ball. I'm holding it double, so that's what I did for that, and that makes it a lot easier. Um, it was breaking a lot of the st a, a lot at the start, but that was because I was tugging it off the plates rather than with my tension because I'm a very loose knitter anyway. Uh, in fact, I realised that I don't tension my yarn really at all and um so after i realized i was supposed to do that things became it was just like normal knitting to me um and the interesting thing about the unspun yarn is like this bit's knitted in three millimeters and this bit's knitted in 4.5 but yet it just adjusts to whatever needle size you're using which is so interesting and the fibres it seems to be at no matter what gauge you're knitting them they seem to just meld together really really nicely so that was really quite interesting um, the pattern that has this nice shoulder detail I've just started doing the sleeves and if I'm able to, I would like to, I'm not sure whether I'm going to knit this kind of, not cropped, but shorter or really long, more like a tunic. Might do either, I'm not sure. Which it has got a split hem on it, so um, that'll be nice. And I might just try it on to show you what it looks like, so two seconds. So the pattern doesn't actually tell you to um, knit the neckband at the start, but I knit it down to the sleeves and I thought, oh, this looks quite big. Um, is this, is my gauge, has it changed because of the unspun yarn, has it changed from the swatch? So what I did was I stopped once I got to the sleeves and I decided to knit the neckband just to see, just to try it on and see if I can get a, a rough feeling of what it's going to be like so I did that and I think it's looking fine and it seems like it's going to be a good fit so my next thing that I have to do is I really really want to do a tubular bind off on this but I've only ever done the tubular bind off on one by one rib and I find that really easy that's fine but I need to go and look for a good tutorial on doing it on two by two rib because I really want that nice flush finish on this because I did it on my first sweater. I went through a phase in my life where I never bothered to adjust, you know, to do those type of bind offs. And now that I've done them, I never want to do anything else because the sense of satisfaction I get every time I wear the sweater and every time I look at the cuff and I see that bind off, I'm so happy with it. So if I need an elastic bind off, the tubular bind off is what I'm going to be doing from now on, I think. Um, so, yes, I need to figure that out. That's my next step here. Um, the pattern just says an elastic bind off, so um, that's what I'm going to do. And um, once I've figured that out, and I'm just going to continue with um, the yoke, I suppose, and then I'm going to do the body. And then I'll finish the sleeves. But isn't this colour amazing? This is totally in my colour area. Really, really nice to knit. So very pleased with this so far. And um, I think it's going to look really good. Um, I was sort of thinking, should I knit the neckband a bit longer so that it kind of 
you know, scrumples down. But I think I'll maybe just leave it because it's sitting up quite nicely and it'll be really cosy. So that is my work in progress at the moment. Um, today is, today, tomorrow and Sunday is the All England Badminton, oh my hair is stuck, Badminton um, um, Championships, I think that's what it's called. Um, I'm quite into badminton and it's on TV, it's on the big screen from today. I've been watching it on YouTube while I'm dying the last day or two. So I have a child free couple of hours now, so I may go and just watch that. I'm really tempted to go and do some dying, but you know what, it's St. Patrick's Day and everyone else is off. So I think I'm just gonna go and knit and watch badminton and then I might go for a nice walk. And then there'll be plenty of time for dying either this afternoon or Monday. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, I don't normally do. Um, I don't. Did I say there? I'm dying some custom orders. I don't normally do custom orders, but um, Albino Glockman released the last long pullover, and it was designed in my heart DK in a colorway called seaweed, which um, is very. It's it's tricky to dye, and it takes a long time. But people seem to love it, and I love it as well, but I'm kind of sickening myself of it now. Um, so I took on, because March has an extra week in the month, so I thought, right, just take on a few custom orders for it, because people are asking me. And it took me basically the whole week. And I mean, there wasn't even that many custom orders as such, but I knew when I took them, it would take me so long to dye them. So... I'll get them finished on Monday and then hopefully get them off in the next, like next week hopefully. So, yes, I think that's all I have to say now. I'm going to go watch the badminton. just hand spun up a tiny tiny amount of Nutaden so that I can cast off um, <clears throat> my tubular bind off so I'm going to do that now just wanted to show it to you before before I did that in case you've never seen it spun up before and it's weird because you don't draft it because it's already pre-drafted so you just spin it basically which is kind of interesting so hopefully this works and it looks nice with the unspun yarn okay so i'm back with a little update on my drop sweater and also have a little bit of yarn to show you so and some very special yarn to show you so first of all i am going to give you an update on my drop sweater just gonna make sure this is filming 
Yes, okay, so I made good progress on my drop sweater over the weekend, which I'm really pleased about. Um, and it's in this delightful bag by Wildwood Stitches, Harriet of Wildwood Stitches. And these will be coming to my shop next month, actually. And she gave me one. So, um, to be honest, this project's a little bit big for this bag. But anyway, um, look at the inside of it. Can you see that? And this is actually Harris Tweed here. So, so pretty and very springy. So my drops wear, lots of progress. My gauge is slightly out, it's slightly too big. However, um, I cast on a few less stitches for the front, hopefully to compensate. Um, it's definitely going to be oversized, so I think I might just do the whole thing like a tunic. Um, I've done the bind off on the nightband and I have a story about that. Um, here it is. Here I've done quite a bit since you've seen it last. It's quite a weird looking shape, but I think um, I think this is how it's supposed to be, so I'm not worried. So this neckband. So I was doing the tubular bind off, but the unspun yarn was not cooperating to do a tubular bind off. It kept breaking. So what I had to do was take some of the knitted in yarn and I actually spin it on my spinning wheel into a two ply yarn so that I could do a tubular bind off. The type of tubular bind off that I did was one where you rearrange the stitches to one by one rib and then you do the cast off. Now I don't know if you can see this but this stitch here pulls in one direction which is so weird but if you look in the inside I think it looks a lot neater. So I'm not, to be honest, I'm not 100% happy with it, but there ain't no way that I'm undoing this because it will be an absolute nightmare. So I have been given a few other techniques to look at, although this seemed to be the most popular one. That's the inside again. That's the outside. So you see what I mean about it leaning? You don't have the leaning on the inside, but you have a funny little ridge, but I don't think it looks as bad as that. So unless I made a mistake, I'm not sure. But anyway, the fabric's beautiful. I'm gonna just quickly try this on. I'm in my <laughs> badminton gear. Um, I was playing a couple of matches. So here we are. So in the photos, this does come down quite quite a way down the arm, this detail. Um, I still have a little bit to go, quite a few rows until I split for the sleeves. I think it's a really good fit around the neck and it feels oh, so, so lovely. Really, really lovely. I love the colour. Um, and I've got a confession to make. I did not block my swatch. Naughty. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I've made really good progress with this and um, you will have seen me spinning the yarn for this bind off a little bit before. I actually, when I went to ply the yarns together or yeah, the singles together, I realised that I didn't have a lazy, well, I do have a lazy cape, but it's broken. I think someone with little fingers went in and because I have one that's spilled into my spinning wheel. I think someone with little fingers went in and sort of did some damage. So that is the saga of this. Um, so I'm gonna have to spin a bit more for the sleeve bind offs and the hem as well. I'm just gonna sit here like this with this on and show you my yarn now. <coughs> I have this mini skein set coming in my next update. This is the Moon Rising mini skein set. And the colour was based on, I was, um, it was, it's based basically on, um, it's not exactly a sunset, but you know when the moon comes up and the sun isn't really set yet, but it's like the colours of the sky were amazing. 
a red and blue, this corally, purpley, so many beautiful colours and I just thought this has to be a mini clean set. So um, this is that. <laughs> And I've also made another mini skin set on the hardstock. This is the Co Cozy Cabin mini skin set. And there's actually, there's six minis in this one and there's five in this one. And these are all the beautiful warm toned colours. Would be so nice for inserting into a shawl with a skin of undyed. I think it would be really, really nice. And last but not least is my limited edition yarn which um, is sourced really close to my studio. It's only like a few miles away, about 10. Um, and it's a blend of Swartblas and Blue Texel yarn. It is wool and spun, so really woolly, really lofty. It's 365 meters per 100 grams. And um, this is what I actually knitted my beret in, my stock and pit beret. I'll insert a photo here. And I held it double for that, so it works really well if you hold two strands of it together. Makes a really nice DK weight. Um, very squishy. The fibres meld together really nicely, so you can't at all tell that there's two strands. Um, some people, I would say it's not as dark as my... Now you can see the colour difference between this is Hebridean and Black Welsh, Welsh Mountain and this is the Blue Texel Sport Bus. Um, so I have no problems knitting with dark yarn because I have a little light that I always use when I'm knitting unless I'm out and about. This one is a little bit greyer, a little bit browner, um, slightly thicker than the Hebridean and Black Welsh Mountain. It was very popular and it's a beautiful yarn, so it is. And this was really beautiful as well to knit with. And you know what? You could put it with this and make, uh beautiful shawl you could knit a sweater um you could hold it double and knit a sweater i imagine this um this yarn would be so nice in like quite a large kind of cardigan jacket with um big patch pockets would look so cool um I seen a pattern, I can't remember what it was called now, but I'll try and find it and put it here. Maybe I'll just pop in some patterns that this yarn would work with. Um, you could knit the drop with it potentially if you got the gauge right, holding it double. Um, it could look really nice. Um, there's a lot of Abbey and Wibble those patterns that this yarn would work with. Um, obviously I knitted my beret. Um, you could also knit hats. You could, it's really good for anything bar socks, I would say. Um, the hard sock and the natural sock is where you want to go if you're looking for a sock yarn. It's spun harder and um, it's worse to spun rather than wool is spun. Um, so yeah, so that is my little update. I'm just going to show you this pretty bag again. It'll give you all the spring feels. These aren't coming until April. So pretty. And the wee hedgehogs on the back, so cute. So I think that's everything from me today. I may try and do a little video next week, potentially. I just realised I have no glasses on. Uh, showing you some more yarns, maybe. Um, if you have any questions about the shop update on the 30th. Uh, yeah, I'll put the date here. It's the 30th of March, 8pm, GMT plus one. Because our clocks will be going forward next weekend. So until next time, when I hopefully will have split for the sleeves, um, that's what's been happening with me. So I hope you really enjoyed that little vlog and I will speak to you all again soon. Bye bye.